Hi YouTube, it's Kathy and this is my weekly entertainment wrap-up for July 4th through 10th. This week I read three books, I watched four shows, I watched two movies, and I listened to three books. And unlike last week where I had three audiobooks to wrap up, it's not because I forgot to talk about one in a previous week. Yay me, remembering things. First this week I read Affliction by Laura Hall. This is a memoir of her growing up in San Francisco, and a key part of that is she had a closeted father. Initially that was the hook that had me questioning whether or not to accept an arc, just because I didn't know if this was going to be something exploitative, but it ended up not being, which was great. Mind you, she found out about her dad being queer when she was in the 70s and she was in her early 20s, so obviously she didn't handle everything perfect about the situation, but it is an interesting perspective to read from. Obviously I would prefer if I had his memoir, but that doesn't exist. She actually didn't even write this memoir until he passed, and then she started looking more into his history and trying to figure more things out about the family history. So altogether, this was actually really well written. It was a great piece of narrative nonfiction, and I very much enjoyed it. Next I read Bloodlust and Bonnets, and this is a graphic novel about this girl who is just minding her own business, being really, really bored about what's happening in her Regency era social setting, and then all of a sudden she's got bloodlust and she just starts killing everybody. Buddy. And then a vampire comes to her and says, hey, do you want to join my secret vampire coven type of thing? And she's like, sure. But then Byron, you know, that Byron from books, shows up and kills the vampire, except for the vampire's immortal, so not really. And is like, I saved you from this. We're going to go on adventures together. It is very funny. It is very weird. There are lots of very fun characters that pop in and out of the plot. It goes on a little bit too long, but also it ends in a very satisfactory way. I also really liked how this one played with the chosen one trope, because as the main character finds out, she's really not that special, just because she's not like other girls, which I really found hilarious. The other graphic novel, or manga rather, that I read this week was My Alcoholic Escape from Reality. This is another one put out by the same person who did My Lesbian Experience with Loneliness. And this is another memoir style graphic novel about her time when she was using alcohol to cope with the world and how that ended up with her having some health complications and her having to be in the hospital for quite an extended period of time. What's interesting about this is it's mostly a critique about an artist's process because she told herself she wasn't going to do memoirs anymore because her parents had having to read her memoirs was kind of hard for them, so she wanted to write fiction, and she was throwing herself in that direction, being like, you can never write memoir again, you can't, and eventually she comes to the conclusion that you can do more than one thing, and that is fine. As somebody who's done creative things before, it, the roller coaster of being creative is like, this is cool, this might be a cool idea, actually this is the coolest thing ever, no this is absolutely shit, no this is actually okay, nobody ever talked to me about this again. It is quite a roller coaster when you're creating something, so I saw a lot of that in this, which I could relate to. On to the shows I watched this week, we are still watching Bones, I think we're in the second season, we might have actually just made it to the third season. We finally got to an episode that I knew was coming for a very long time because it's a very iconic episode. It's the first Gravedigger episode, so it was exciting to get to that point. It was also exciting to get to the point where Hodgins and Angela finally start flirting and then finally maybe fall a little bit in love. At least he falls in love much quicker than she does. We also continued on with a few episodes of Sex and the City, and I had just complained about the fact that, hey, this is an HBO show, but I haven't seen any butts yet, and then literally a minute later there was a butt on the screen. So HBO has been showing butts for a very long time. I also watched this week's episode of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars Season 6. Again, it's All-Stars, so you've known these people, you've loved these people. I think that the person that went home deserved to go home this week, especially because they've been kind of bottom top, bottom top, and yeah. There are some people that are kind of skating through, but I felt like it was this contestant's time to go. Because I hadn't had enough drag in my life, apparently, I also watched all four episodes of RuPaul's Secret Celebrity Drag Race, which is just as fun as it sounds. There are three secret celebrities that show up, and then you have three queens from previous seasons who act as their mentors and take them through a mini challenge, a maxi challenge, a turn on the runway, and then also lip syncing for their charities, which is a lot of fun. There were a bunch of celebrities that I didn't know about, or I didn't know a lot about, and then there were some that I actually knew from a couple of things, so that was fun. Also, it's all for charity, so everyone is super positive and having the time of their lives, and it just really makes me want to get made over by a drag queen every day of my life. 
First movie I watched this week was Nine, and this was something I had never really heard of before. There's a potential that my best friend first told me about it when it was first happening, but I never got around to watching it, and I can see why this was not super prioritized. You would think it's a musical, and it's got this amazing cast. That in itself is the reason why I ended up watching it this time. That and my roommate's like, wait, you've never seen this before? It's not a great musical. I mean, it has some amazing performances by some amazing actresses, but other than that, it's just, uh, it's not great. And that's coming from me, who really loves anything to do with theatre, and this was a very theatre-based movie about this director and all of the nine women who have really helped him as muses in his life. And I felt that the screenwriting was very male-centric, and I just would have loved to have movies about all of these women and kind of leave this director out of it. Strangely enough, the other movie I watched this week was This Changes Everything, which is a documentary all about how women are trying to break into being directors in Hollywood, how that actually used to be a thing up until talkies happened, and how uh, that is just not being a thing that's happening. This is something I was already aware of, but I didn't know to the extent, because you can see an infographic and kind of take in that information, but when you sit down and watch an hour and a half documentary about it, you pull in a little bit more. If you're interested, that documentary is on Netflix. One of the books I listened to this week, the first one being The Chosen and the Beautiful. This one is a reimagining of The Great Gatsby, which is an American classic I have never read because I, I don't care about American classics. However, the protagonist of this one is queer, Asian, and female, so already it sounds more interesting than The Great Gatsby. And then also there's magic, so there's that element to it as well. Obviously because I don't really know what happens in The Great Gatsby, because I haven't even seen the movie, even though I probably should, I can't draw all those many parallels because there's very little about the plot of that book that I know. However, I do know that it is set in this very opulent world and all of these parties that Jay Gatsby has all of the times, and I felt that that opulence was translated into the magic use in this book. There was also something to do with the magic use that I didn't really see coming by the end of the book, so maybe I would have if I was more familiar with the original. I'll never know because I'm probably never going to read that book, although I might watch the movie at some point and then try to figure out all of the parallels that I can. Either way, this was interesting. The next audiobook I listened to was She Drives Me Crazy. This is about a basketball player who has recently been dumped by her girlfriend who is also a basketball player because the girlfriend wanted to move to a different school that treats girls basketball more highly and basically is a status climber and just got rid of her girlfriend because she didn't fit into her like status climbing life. Just as school year is starting before real game season starts they have a game together and it doesn't go well because she's very distracted about still being in love with her ex-girlfriend and how her girlfriend mistreated her and then to top it all off in the parking lot she accidentally hits the car of a cheerleader technically it's the cheerleader's fault she had the right of way and all that type of stuff but because of this incident she's having to communicate with this cheerleader who previously had her car towed so there's some animosity between these two characters however she does come up with a scheme to make her ex-girlfriend jealous by hanging out with the cheerleader and it's uh, full of a lot of shenanigans. I actually really ended up enjoying this, especially because a lot of this comes down to the fact that even though she knew she shouldn't still be in love with her ex-girlfriend because she was very manipulative and wasn't good for her at all, that doesn't mean she can suddenly not have feelings anymore. This was short and sweet but also managed to be complex and had very interesting characters and situations and I very much appreciated it for that. The other book I listened to was Upright Women Wanted by Sarah Gailey. Originally I thought this was like an old-timey western, and it is a western, but it is a dystopian because it is set after the current time. Essentially our main character has escaped her life and tried to join the librarians who like are like the pack horse librarians of yesteryear who used to go around to different communities distributing books. She's escaping her life because her best friend and also secret lover was recently killed for having some pamphlets with material that is not approved by the state. Because she comes from a very small town and because being queer is apparently something you're just not allowed to do in this dystopian future, she didn't realize that there are other people that are like her. So it comes to her as quite a surprise when she joins up with these librarians, hides in their stuff for a few days as a stowaway, and then comes to realize that they are also queer people. This was a lot of fun, it also had a non-binary love interest which I really appreciated, and it's a good time. I think that everybody should read this, especially if you want to read a western but you don't want to read an old white dude western, you want to read something with a little more inclusion and anti-fascist 
fascism kind of baseline, all of those types of things. Very much appreciate. I can't speak in real English sentences, that's fine. That's it for this week. If you've read, watched, or listened to any of these, let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. If you don't feel like leaving a comment but want to make sure that I know you were here, just leave me an emoji or a smiley face if you're on your keyboard. Some people have asked if there's a way to financially support this channel, so I set up a coffee account, which is a digital tipping service. The link for that is down below, as well as the link to my PayPal and my Amazon wishlist in case you would like to buy me a book. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye!